We're talking with Dr. Katherine Pohl, Assistant Professor of Curriculum and Instruction at the University of Texas at Arlington, and we're learning more about online peer review of teaching. So, Dr. Pohl, tell us a bit about your background, how you learned about online teaching, and then tell us some tips about the process. Yeah. Um, well, I've been teaching online for several years. Actually, I taught online before I came to UTA, so I had a little bit of background for it. Um, but you know, I'm always interested in improving my teaching too. And so I, one of the ways that I prepared my own courses was by signing up to be a reviewer for the Blackboard Exemplary Course Program so that I could um, get in and look at other people's courses because people submit their very best work and I wanted to see what was considered to be the best. So um, I uh, trained as a reviewer for that program. And then um, at UTA, I've also put my courses through the Quality Matters rubric. Uh -huh. um, and that's a pretty thorough rubric for looking looking at the Blackboard component of an online course. And um, so anyway, I've looked at various ways of improving my own teaching, and then that has helped me become um, a reviewer for other people's courses as well. Good. Okay, good. What tips do you have about the online peer review process? Well, um, if we're thinking about um, reviewing a course if you're if either if you're um, an instructor or if you are a person reviewing what i like to start with is a conversation with the person whose um whose course i was asked to review and um at that conversation i try to get an overview of the course like you know so what are the main objectives what are the goals um you know what does the instructor want the student to come out of the course knowing or being able to do. And then I ask about the characteristics of the learners. Um, you know, what level are they? What kind of background knowledge do they have? Are there some assumptions made about whether um, this is their introduction to a course or whether they already have um, some understanding? What do the students know about online work? Is this their first online course or have they mm -hmm. been through one before? Because those things all matter in how a course is set up and uh, what it looks like for students and how much information um, we need to give them. And then um, I ask the uh, person um, that I'm evaluating what they've been working on in a course. So sometimes people spend a lot of time putting together their content and that's the main focus at any particular time. You know, we're always revising our courses. So um, if they've been revising content, I look to see um, you know, how that all has been put together. Yeah. And you know, sometimes it's they're working on the organization. They've got the content down, but the um, the way it flows or the way it's structured is what is being worked on. And so I look at it a little bit differently if that's the, um, the thing that they've been working on most recently. And then the last thing I ask them is where they feel like um, they need help or what they're finding as a struggle in the course. Because usually you know, we all have something about our courses that we want to change based on student feedback or, um, or just our own personal feelings. You know, we say, oh, I wish I could do this a little bit better. And so I, I try to get to those things because in the process of a, a review, I um, sometimes am able to give some suggestions that help them meet their own goals better. Okay, good. And then what's your process for reviewing itself the, on Blackboard in our case? Of yeah, well, the first thing I look at is the syllabus. Um, well, you know, I open the course and I look to see if um, everything is arranged, if all the pieces are there, you know, if there is a syllabus link and if there's a calendar link and, and if everything is arranged in an orderly sort of way. But the first document that I review is the syllabus itself. And I look to see things like, um, you know, are all the required components there? Has the instructor introduce themselves? Have they given the students ways to contact them? Um, we can, you know, we can give our, we do give usually our email addresses, but it's also good for online students to have a little bit extra support because they don't get to see us. So um, I look to see if there are other ways to contact things like, you know, an IM connection or um, online office hours and the way to get to that, or um, perhaps a, um, an office and a cell phone number. I don't put my cell phone number on my syllabus because I don't want my number out there and our syllabus is made public, but um, I do put a note on my syllabus that students can ask me for my cell phone number and I give it to them. And I think those things are all really helpful to students. You know, knowing that there are multiple ways to get in touch with us to make the course more than a correspondence course. You know, they have, they're engaged yeah. with real people, you know. Yeah, real I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, and then I look to see um, other things. Are all of the, are the assignments outlined? So can students look at the syllabus and tell what they'll be doing, what the um, instructional activities are, 
um, and I look to see a statement of why. You know, in our face-to-face -face classes, we tell students why we're doing things, but in online courses, sometimes we forget to do that. A really good place to put that in would be just, you know, sometimes a statement or two on the syllabus about why they're doing a particular activity or why you selected a particular resource for them to use because it becomes a kind of a living document that they can refer to um, throughout the course. And then um, I look to see if there are policy statements, you know, how do, what are your grading policies? What, what constitutes an A? What constitutes a B? Um, what are the expectations of students? You know, do you expect them to log into the course once a week, twice a week, once every two weeks? You know, what is, what is the expectation? And then, um, and then along with that, I think because we have expectations for our students, they should have expectations for us. And especially in an online course where, um, you know, in a face-to-face -face course, you show up when you, when the course is held, but in an online course, it can be a little bit different. So I think students need to know, you know, how often will we log in? How often will we check email? How, um, if they send us an email, what can they expect as far as a response time? Um, how often or how quickly will they get grades back on assignments? I think all of those things should be laid out for them as things that they can use to build their trust in us as instructors. Um, for online classes. And then I look to see if there are um, multiple modes for learning. You know, it's really, um, you know, a, a lot of times we think of learning as, you know, text-based, but we can also look for, for videos and um, other kinds of supportive material. And I think those things are helpful too. And they don't have to all be instructor-created videos. Sometimes they, you know, they're things that we curate, you know, we look for them on the web, but um, we, we should have all of those things. And then, I look for things that make a course accessible to many students. Um, you think of universal design, and so mm -hmm. you know, are the documents things that can be read by a machine reader? Are there captions on videos? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what kind of supports are there for? Yeah, many accessible to everyone. Right. Oh, yeah. well, good. Um, those are. Those are all great ideas. Can I just recap and let me know if um, there's anything else you want to add. So you sure. talked about the pre-course conversation and that should be just um, something that where you look at the syllabus and talk about the instructors prior iterations of the course if there are any and what they've changed and what you know an ongoing kind of um, revision process and right. then you talk yeah and then you talked about syllabus and how important that is especially with online would you agree? Oh, I think it's really important with online. You know, we don't have the luxury of, um, you know, re-explaining or, you know, explaining to students in a face-to-face -face kind of way. Everything they have right up front comes from the syllabus. And I think it's critical yeah. to let them know exactly what they're, what they're getting into. Okay, great. And then I loved the things you said about communication, um, ways to have two-way communication, mm -hmm. and then clear expectations. And my students have told me they like detailed instructions. Mm -hmm. The more detailed, the better. Right. Excuse me. And then organization, I heard like overarching. You're right. Big, you're big on organization of the course and then supportive materials and including accessibility. Mm -hmm. Is there anything yeah. else? Um, no. Well, just going back to the organization piece, I do look at that a lot in an online course because if we don't help our students sort of navigate their way through, then it's really easy for them to feel lost and overwhelmed. So I look for, you know, maybe um, folders by module or by week, and then I look for subfolders that have different kinds of materials in there so that students have it all, it's all there, but it's kind of packaged for them so that they're not looking at, you know, a, a big long string of documents all at one time. And um, to oh, me, that, good. that's a really critical piece of oh, good. course design. I'll just add one thing. My students like little short videos where the <laughs> professor explains the assignment beyond the text yeah. based. What do you think? Oh, I, I think those are great, um, especially if you can do a screen capture using something like Jing or Camtasia um, to show them exactly how to do something. Like, so when, when I want my students, for example, to log into a library database, I'll make a quick little video um, showing them the screen process, you know, what it looks like going from here to here. Um, and there are lots of ways to do this. And yeah, I've seen some of yours too, and they're, they're great. Yeah, well, good. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul. We appreciate your time and expertise. Thanks, Peggy. Bye. Bye.